Hello everyone. Today we will talk about price controls. In some markets, government intervene and set prices for goods and services. Price controls are attempt to set or manipulate prices through government regulations in the market. There are two types of price controls, price ceiling and price floor. Price ceiling is legally established maximum price for a good or service. Example of price ceilings are rent control, price gouging laws. Price floor is legally established minimum price for a good or service. Classic example of price floor is minimum wage law. This is our roadmap. We will look into three different situations of price floors and price ceilings. Non-binding, binding, and long run effects of price ceilings and price floors. Although ceilings and floors might have good intentions, it is important to think about unintended consequences. We need to understand the difference between non-binding price control and binding price control in general. There is no effect under non-binding price control and market equilibrium is the best outcome. Let me ask you, why do you think the government imposes price controls. The government imposes price ceilings when the market price is too high to help consumers. They impose price floors when the market price is too low to help producers. How can you remember price controls? There is a difference between a binding and non-binding price control. Let's try to understand the binding price ceiling. Look at the ceiling. No problems, right? Now crawl under a desk or table. What happens if the ceiling is too low? You want to go higher, but you cannot. Look at the ceiling. In a binding price ceiling, the price wants to rise, but can't. Let's try to understand the binding price floor. Stand on top of the table. At this height, you will have trouble reaching your computer which is still further down. When do price ceilings matter? Let's look at the example of price ceiling on bread. Prices are rising so government wants to help low income households. Therefore, government imposes a price ceiling on bread of 50 cents per loaf. What are the unintended consequences? Lower price increases quantity demanded, decreases quantity supply. So, we get a shortage. Now, the size of the loaf of bread gets smaller so that the farm can maintain some profits 
quality of bread goes down as farm use cheaper ingredients. The opportunity cost of finding bread will be higher. Remember that once you include the opportunity of waiting in line, the full cost to the consumer will be more than the market price. As a result, illegal bread black market may form. Now let's look at price ceilings under three different conditions. A binding price ceiling, a non-binding price ceiling, and long run effects of price ceiling. Non-binding price ceiling. Without the price ceiling, equilibrium price PE equal to $1 and equilibrium quantity is QE. Suppose the government imposes a $2 price ceiling. Shares in area below and above price ceiling. Any price equal and less than $2 is legal. Any price higher than $2 is illegal. Since equilibrium E occurs in the green area, the price ceiling does not influence the market. It is non-binding. Let's look at the effect of binding price ceiling in short run. Without the price ceiling, equilibrium price PE equal to $1 and QE is the equilibrium quantity. Government imposes 50 cents price ceiling, shares in area, below and above price ceiling since equilibrium E occurs in the red area the price ceiling does influence the market it is binding QS is the quantity supplied and QD is the quantity demanded and the shortage is QD minus QS. At the price ceilings of 50 cents, quantity demanded QD greater than quantity supplied QS. So there is a shortage of bread. Note that this is a general consequence of a binding price ceiling to get shortages. When there are shortages, alternative rationing methods are used, such as waiting in line, ration coupons based on need, etc. I would like to point out that in an uncontrolled market, price rations the good. That means if there was excess demand, price would increase to bring the market back to equilibrium E. The black market price is $2. With only QS units available, consumers are willing and able to pay $2 per loaf. This eliminates the shortage, but the price is well above the price ceiling. Now let's look at the effect of a binding price ceiling in the long run. Without the price ceiling, equilibrium price PE equal to $1 and QE is the equilibrium quantity. Since we are considering the long run, note that the demand and supply curves are more elastic. In the supply side, 
bakers respond in the long run by producing less bread and making products that are not subject to price controls. In the demand side, in the long run, consumers will attempt to take advantage of the price ceilings by changing eating habits to consume more bread. Look at the price ceiling. New quantity supply and quantity demand and new shortages. So in the long run, the shortage gets larger. Black market price is $1.50. Long run black market prices are less than before, which was $2 in the short run since consumers have had time to find alternatives. Let's look at two real world examples for price ceiling, rent control and price gouging. Rent control is price ceiling that applies to the market for apartment rentals. Price gouging laws is temporary ceiling on the prices that sellers can ch charge during times of emergency. Besides shortages, what are some unintended consequences for rent controls? Since the rent control is so low, owners have less revenue for maintenance to make a reasonable profit. Rent control policies have led to the decay of many apartment buildings. Although the law limits the rent that landlords may charge, landlords can charge add-on fees, key fees, and high security deposits. If there are rent controls, there is less incentive to invest in building a new unit, which makes the shortage worse in the long run. Other consequences can include it provides an incentive for people to stay in rent control housing longer than they would have otherwise. Rent control apartments are passed from one generation to the next in order to remain in the program. So many people who live in rent control apartments are no longer low income. Owners of rent control buildings may convert them to other uses, for example, turn them into condos. Let's look at the effect of rent control in the short run and long run. In the short run, shortage equals quantity demanded in the short run, QDSR, minus quantity supplied in the short run QSSR. In the long run, both supply and demand become more elastic. Suppliers have more time to adjust and the quantity of apartment supplied falls. Renters try to substitute toward renting rent control apartments, so the quantity of apartments demanded rises. Therefore, shortage gets bigger in the long run. Now let's look at price gouging laws, which are temporary price ceilings imposed during emergencies. Imagine that there is a severe, severe hurricane. How would an uncontrolled market deal with 
an increase in the demand for generators. Because of the hurricane, the demand for generators increases. At the initial price, there would be an excess demand for generator. Remember that prices act to ration scarce resources. So with excess demand, the price of generator increases. This ensures that the av available units are distributed to those who value them the most. The higher price also provides suppliers with an incentive to provide more generators. This is how markets are supposed to work. Initial equilibrium P equal to 530 and the quantity Q before. Demand increases because of the hurricane. New equilibrium price is 900 and quantity is Q after. This is what would happen if there were no controls. Now government set a price ceiling below 900 but above 530 which is price maximum under gauging law note that since price max is greater than the normal price 530 it is non-binding during normal times since the price ceiling is less than the equilibrium price there is a shortage. Now, let's look at price floors. Recall that a price floor is the minimum legal price. What does government impose price floor? Again, think about the unintended consequences. Suppose the government imposed a $6 price floor on milk. Will there be more or less milk for sale? Higher price reduces quantity demanded and increases quantity supplied. So we get a surplus. Size of container gets larger to make more attractive. Will milk sell for a price below floor? Yes, since producers won't want to hold on to surplus milk. Are producers better off? It depends. Can they sell the surplus at a lower prices? Does the government buy the surplus? If they can sell the surplus at lower prices, they are worse off. If the government buys the surplus, they are better off. Let's look at price floor under three different conditions, a non-binding price floor, a binding price floor, and long-run effects of price floor. Non-binding price floor. Without the price Floor equilibrium price PE is equal to $3 and equilibrium quantity is QE. The government imposes a $2 price floor. In the red area, price is below is $2. Any price less than $2 is illegal. In the green area, price is above $2. Any price greater than or equal $2 is legal. Since equilibrium E occurs in the green area, the price floor does not influence the market. It is non-binding.
Let's look at the effect of a binding price floor in the short run. In, without the price floor, equilibrium price PE equal to $3 and QE is the equilibrium quantity. The government imposes a $6 price floor. There are green and red area below and above the price floor. Since equilibrium occurs in the red area, the price floor does influence the market. It is binding. QS, QD are quantity demanded and quantity supplied and here is the surplus. At the price floor of $6, Quantity supplied, QS greater than quantity demanded, QD. So there is surplus of milk. Note that this is a general consequence of binding price floor to get surplus. Black market develops, black market price is $2. With QS units produced, consumers are willing only and able to pay $2 per gallon. This eliminates the surplus, but the price is well below the price floor. Suppose there was no black market and the QS units of milk were allocated by consumers waiting in line. Let's look at the effect of a binding price floor in the long run. Without the price floor, equilibrium price PE is $3 and QE is the equilibrium quantity. Since we are considering the long run, note that the demand and supply curves are more elastic. In the supply side, dairy farms respond in the long run by acquiring more land and expanding production facilities so they can produce more milk. In the demand side, in the long run, consumers will find milk substitutes. A classic example of price floor is minimum wage law. The lowest hourly wage rate that farms may legally pay their workers. Rational for minimum wage is provide a living wage helping the working poor who are often unskilled. Before looking at the effects of minimum wage law, let's review labor market first. In the market for goods and services, households demand goods, farms supply goods, in the market for labor, households supply labor, farms demand labor. As wages increase or decrease, the quantity of labor demanded decreases or increases. Therefore, the demand for labor is downward sloping. As wages increase or decrease, the quantity of labor supplied increases or decreases. Therefore, the supply for labor is generally upward sloping. Let's look at the non-binding minimum wage case. Without a minimum wage, equilibrium wage WE is $10 and QE is the equilibrium quantity. The old minimum wage is $7. The government increases the minimum wage to $9. Since the new minimum wage is still below the equilibrium wage, there is no effect. Now let's look at the effect of binding minimum wage in short run and long run. Without the minimum wage, equilibrium wage WE is $7 and Q 
QV is the equilibrium quantity in the short run. Government imposes a $10 minimum wage. Green and red area are below and above $10. Any wage less than $10 is illegal. Any wage greater than or equal to $10 is legal. Equilibrium occurs in the red area. The minimum wage does influence the market. It is binding. The quantity demanded of labor is QD and quantity supplied of labor is QS. And here is short run unemployment. The increase in the wage that firms have to pay reduces quantity demanded QD. The increase in the wage also increases quantity supply QS. The result is a surplus of workers or unemployment. As you know, in the long run, both demand and supply curve are more elastic. Demand is more elastic in the long run since firms have more time to adjust to higher wage. For example, by replacing workers with machines or robots. Supply is more elastic since it is more attractive to work as opposed to being retired or in school. Here is the QD quantity demand and QS quantity supplied in the long run and the long run unemployment. In the long run unemployment is greater than in the short run. Causes of unemployment created by minimum wage. Decrease in quantity demanded of labor and decrease in quantity supplied of labor. Farms may replace low skill jobs with capital. For example, using robots, shortening hours of workers, Farms may relocate where no minimum wage. Example, lots of companies have their factories in India or China. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.